Switcher South Africa in proud association with Change Cars. Change Cars is a trusted online website because they work with trusted dealers and the best insure in South Africa. Discovery Insure. Welcome back to Switcher South Africa. I'm Nikki Nash as always, and today we're inside another electric car. This is the Volvo C40 Twin Recharge. Twin Recharge meaning it's a two battery, so there's one in front, one in the back, being a four wheel drive. So this one is fitted with this black color. I love this car. The tint as well in this car is, is, is insane, uh, for lack of a better word. But I'm gonna tell you about the look of the car in front. There we are, the side profile. You're gonna jump inside the vehicle, tell you the few things this car has, and then obviously you're gonna speak about the driving impression of the vehicle. So on the exterior side of things, you get a closed door grille in front because you don't need a grille, this being electric car. You get fog lamps down here, then you get these lights. These lights very, look work very well especially at night because they use something called pixel technology so they can high beam on the left high beam on the right or high beam around the car you're driving behind there's something i like about this car in most electric cars well all the electric cars i've gotten there's never been something called a front boot but this one does have that you lift here in front you get something where so you think it's a big boot but honestly it's just to put your charging cables put a few snacks something light you know something i do like because it does look cool when you do actually use it in public it does give off that what are you doing so moving on to the side profile of the vehicle, obviously the first thing you're going to see is the how dark the tint is. That's number one. I don't think that comes standard. You obviously need to pay for that. The second thing I like about the car, the, the, the side profile, the, the, the wheels. Amazing wheels, looking at 20 inch wheels. Um, that's what regards to the side profile of the vehicle. Moving on to the back now. So now moving on to the back, you get this coupe style design here at the back. How does it look? Honestly, at first I didn't like it, but I've spent a couple of days with the vehicle and it's slowly growing on me. You get this double um, spoiler effect. You get the spoiler up here at the top and you get the actual spoiler down here at the bottom. And then obviously it's a Volvo, it writes Volvo in big. It'll tell you what Volvo it is. And then obviously recharge twin twin, like I said, beginning of the video. But at the back, um, it's, uh, it's a bit controversial. I'm not really a fan of it, but People might like it, you might like it, I might not like it. But that's with regards to the back of the vehicle. Opening up the boot, you get decent boot capacity. You can fit nice suitcases inside. And the nice feature I like about this specific vehicle is that the, the floor is flat loading and you can adjust the, the floor at, to put um, grocery bags. And then you get under, under floor loading. And then you would think you, could, you can fit the, the parcel shelf, this one, that covers underneath there, but honestly you can't, but I wish you could. Something I don't necessarily like about this vehicle. But I've told you about the boot capacity and the rear end of the vehicle. Now let's jump inside and let me show you an interior feature that the man behind the camera does not like. But honestly, I don't mind it. I actually do like it. Let's jump inside. Let me show you. So jumping inside the vehicle, there's a reason why I started the video like that. Because when you sit down in the Volvo, that happens. It kicks up the Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. If I stand up, it's going to stop. I'll show you guys at the end of the video. But what I don't like in terms of the infotainment system is that the Apple CarPlay is wired. And there's a 2023 model. I hope, I wish it was wireless and I'm paying 1.3 million rand for this vehicle, something I don't necessarily like. But the interior of the vehicle, this being electric, Volvo decided to go with the blue um, contrast thing on the side here. So the, the floors are blue, the door panels on the side are blue. So it's something that, like, like I said, the guy behind the camera phone doesn't like it. I actually do like it. I find it unique and different compared to many other manufacturers. You get a digital instrument cluster up front. Leather wrap steering with all your controls. On the left hand side, you get your adaptive cruise control system and your lane keep system. And on the right hand side, you get your track selection and your volume. What I don't like is that the volume just shows up or down. It's not like a plus or minus. So you need to, you'll first play around on the adaptive cruise side thinking it's the volume, but the volume is on the other side of the vehicle. And then moving on to the infotainment system. It's okay. It's an Android based infotainment system. So if I swipe down now, it will show you that my phone, Nikki's iPhone is currently connected. And then underneath that, it says software update like it's a phone so you, i can install it and then the software updates but i'm not going to install it i'm going to leave it to volvo because next thing i install then the car stops working i don't want to risk it like that but it's an infotainment it's an android infotainment system so it has play store there's google maps it has Waze, there's google assist what does that mean if you press on play store it'll show you sign in so you can sign in to your google um, account and have all the android apps you want here so you can download a game Utile JK actually did download a game. He has a long term of Volvo as well. He was actually playing games on the infotainment system. You can do that, but because I have a car for the week, there's no need for me to log in there. But that's with regards to the infotainment system. There's something called air quality here as well. It'll tell you um, if the air quality that's inside the vehicle is okay, then they'll tell you the air quality on the outside, then it'll, it'll, it'll do everything for you. So it has something called 
cool infotainment system so as i'm sitting down like this and it feels like the air quality is not good or it's too hot and the and my air conditioning is off it will right it will kick up itself and cool the infotainment system and i do not know why it does that but it's a nice feature that it does that but it, sometimes it bores it bores me so you need to close your your air vents to avoid that but that's what regards to the infotainment system up here lower end you get your volume control pause track selection in the, um, the hazards here and then rear climate control and front climate control as regards to the inf in terms of the front of the vehicle so here looking the lower end this car does not have a start button so when you get into the vehicle the first thing you do get in you look for a start button does not have a start button so you're wondering how do you move you just pop the vehicle and drive and then you move forward it will go so we're not going to do that now but that's what goes to the info we got through the interior at the back let's go to the in front let's go to the back so i can show you my headroom leg room and yeah the nitty gritty essentially so let me show you there right apple couple is kicked in when i get out read there so now at the back you get decent leg room head room is a bit on the tight side being a coupe style design so the headroom is a bit tight for someone like me and i can imagine if you're a bit taller you won't enjoy being here at the back but you do get heated seats here at the back so the the passengers here at the back get heated seats you get two um type c chargers here at the back two in front as well then you get an armrest with cup holders but i don't like the cup holders because they're exposed and you can stick your hand in there i do not like that but you get through loading but the through loading is a bit complicated because um you get the the armrest things are right there so it's a bit on the on the on the tight side of things but that's regards to here at the back not too much to speak about obviously you get this um glass panoramic um glass roof um it doesn't slide it doesn't close it does not have a net so it's always like this what do i think about it it's on the tight side of things i don't necessarily like it because sometimes the sun might penetrate but most of the time i've had this car i've not had a problem with the sun but i feel like eventually you will have a problem with it and you would wish it had a curtain on top but that's what regards to the to the interior of the vehicle now time to speak about my driving impression of the car and cost of ownership you guys join me inside the Volvo C40 Twin Recharge for my driving impressions of the vehicle. I need to tell you the most important thing is the power of this vehicle and how it drives. Because I've told you about the exterior of the vehicle. So this car uses a 78 kilowatt hour battery, um, which produces 300 kilowatts and 660 newton meters of torque. Yes, you heard me right. This is the far, this is the most powerful test car we've had, and it's, it's an electric vehicle. Volvo claims um, a 0 to 100 in 4.7 seconds. Um, I do believe you can get that because it does feel quick, and I do believe you can beat that. I just haven't tested it out myself. So, in terms of the electric side of cars, before I speak about how it drives, I need to tell you its consumption or its range. So, I know you guys have range, range anxiety. So, Volvo claims it can do 444 kilometers on one charge. Um, I'm currently averaging 22.3 22 um, kilowatt hours, and being and this battery being 78 kilowatt hour, being a 78 kilowatt hour battery, I can at my current consumption I can do 350 k's to 360 k's on the way I've been driving this vehicle. So I've been driving slow, I've been driving fast, so it's adapting to where to where I've been driving. But if you do drive it slow, you can get close to 400 and above 400. Do I think you can do that exact um, 444? Maybe, maybe not. Not too sure. Now going to the drive of the vehicle, the car drives smooth, um, it's a very quiet car, it's a very smooth car, it doesn't feel electric, um, if that makes sense, um, it's just that you don't have the noise, but the car is okay, road imperfections, it handles well, and you'd think that it would be very stiff with this vehicle, but it's actually not, because looking at being, a, being having so much power, you think it's more of a sporty vehicle, it should be stiff here and there, but honestly it's legit, very smooth. The steering wheel, the steering wheel feeling of, of, of it as well is quite light, um, not too heavy, but you can go into the infotainment system and change it up. So you click the, the settings button, you click the driving, you scroll down all the way down. Then the last thing there is called steering wheel, um, steering fuel firm. So if you do press that, I do think it does give weight a bit, slight weight, but not too much, but it does give a slight weight, but I prefer with it off because um, I've been driving with it off. So it just makes the steering wheel a bit, uh, be feel a bit la heavier and then it has something called one pedal drive and you guys if you've seen my ix3 video my eqa eqd you guys know i'm a super fan of the one pedal drive so if you haven't seen those videos what is one pedal drive one pedal drive is when you drive with one pedal so the accelerator pedal so you go on the accelerator when you let off the car brakes and when it's braking it's region it's, it's regenerating so it's 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 improving the your fuel efficiency and it's charging up the batteries again so that you don't use as much 
battery you know so i love the one pedal drive many people don't but you do get used to it um that's with regards to that i've covered mostly the most important things we need to know about this, this electric vehicle and now it's time for the most important part cost of ownership and my overall thoughts of this vehicle and for that i need to be standing outside and tell you every single thing you need to know so on the cost of ownership side of things this vehicle is it's priced at 1,285,000 Rand. Finance that with no deposit over a period of five years, 60 months. I'm at an interest rate of 12.25. This vehicle, you're looking at paying monthly repayments of 28,747 Rand. And that is a lot of money. Factor insurance of that. Obviously, you're gonna, I'm gonna need you to go to the Dis Discovery Insure. Click the link in the description box below to see how much you can pay for insurance, whether this vehicle or any other vehicle. Um, for that and then obviously gonna tell them who sent you Sosa from Sijo South Africa so that's what regards to the cost of ownership now time to speak about what do I like about this vehicle do I like the vehicle would I buy the vehicle would I recommend the vehicle one do I like the kill do I like, do I like the vehicle no I don't I love the vehicle two would I buy the vehicle it's a lot of money but if I had it 100% because I've enjoyed my time with the vehicle three would I recommend the vehicle 100% so the question I've been getting asked because I had the iX3 like two weeks ago and it's priced around the same as this vehicle. People are asking me this or an iX3 and honestly, I'm going to include the EQB as well into, into the equation. Honestly, you cannot compare those two electric cars to this one. Reason being, those ones are more practical, more family orientated. The person looking to buy an iX3 is not the same type of person looking to buy this. You do not buy this vehicle for practicality, to put your kids inside. You buy this vehicle because you just like the look of the vehicle and you love the power um, on the side. So if you're looking for practicality, I'll tell you, go for the iX3. But if you're looking for the power and you just want to be unique, this is the vehicle to get to get because this car will show the iX3 how a fast car should move but the ix3 will show this vehicle in terms of practicality so it just weighs up to where you as a as a customer what you'd like but honestly whether you get an ix3 or this one you'd enjoy it which one do i like the most i'm not gonna tell you that i'm not gonna set myself up like that but i've told you everything you need to know about this vehicle from such a south africa i'm nikki nash as always and i hope to see you on the next one